Hi, welcome back to the channel and video number 106. This video will be discussing some of the technical aspects of the turbo system installed on the Raptor. That's an Audi diesel powered canard aircraft. A lot of people may have been watching the uh, building and development of that aircraft for a while. And I know there's been a lot of discussion about the turbo system on the YouTube videos. And uh, I'm just going to clarify some of the uh, technical aspects of that today. So for those of you who don't know me, I've got uh, about 45 years background in turbocharging engines, rebuilding turbochargers, matching them for race cars, racing them, uh, matching them for aircraft, uh, helping with some of the Reno racers in sport class. And I've been flying my own turbocharged automotive engine powered aircraft for the last 18 years. So I have pretty extensive real world experience with turbos, engines, and matching turbos for all types of engines. And for the last 30 years, I've dealt exclusively with Garrett turbochargers. I've done a lot of mixing and matching of compressors and turbines to optimize performance for all sorts of applications, including many aircraft. So Raptor uses a compound turbo system. And what does that mean? Basically, we've got two turbos. This would be the uh, first stage turbo here. Air would come in through the compressor, get compressed here into the second compressor and get compressed further and that allows us to raise the boost pressure uh, to levels higher than would be possible with a single turbo and on the exhaust side the exhaust comes out of the engine through this turbine out the turbine and through to drive the second turbine here okay so why does Raptor require compound turbos why can't it just use one turbo this chart here shows uh, compressor pressure ratio versus altitude at 80 inches absolute manifold pressure for the engine. So here we've got altitude. This is the atmospheric pressure at these altitudes, and this is the compressor pressure ratio at these altitudes. So at sea level, this is the pressure, 29.92 inches. And uh, to make 80 inches, we require a pressure ratio of 2.67. And you'll see as the uh, altitude increases here, the atmospheric pressure decreases and the pressure ratio required to make 80 inches increases. So with Raptor's uh, cruise altitude, 25,000 feet, the atmospheric pressure is only 11.12 inches, and to make 80 inches, we require a pressure ratio of 7.19. And remember that uh, number, 7.19. This is a turbocharger compressor map for the GTX 2867R, which is one of the turbos that Raptor is using. And uh, we can see pressure ratio on the left side here. And remember that number before, 7.19. You see that the turbocharger, one turbocharger, is incapable of making anywhere close to 7.19 pressure ratio. Basically, you wouldn't want to run this thing over about three and a quarter perhaps, which is uh, less than half of what's required to supply the required manifold pressure at 25,000 feet. And that's the reason we require compound turbos here. We need to boost the pressure much higher than 3.25. We need to boost it to uh, 7.19. Now Raptor is fitted with two turbos of approximately the same size. And we're going to look at why that's uh, just incorrect for compound turbos. Boyle's law states that pressure is inversely proportional to volume. So if we have twice the pressure, we have half the volume and double the density. So we can understand this concept maybe more easily just using uh, the example of a two-stage air compressor. So uh, first stage, low pressure stage, we have a very large volume here, big piston. Uh, it's going through an intercooler, which is exactly what we're doing with the uh, diesel engine and turbochargers. And it goes into the uh, second high pressure stage, which uses a much smaller volume, smaller piston. And uh, with turbochargers, exactly the same thing. And that's why uh, with compound turbos, you never use two turbos with the same compressor size. Just not done because it doesn't work. So here's a photo of a two-stage air compressor. This is uh, the first stage here. Note the size of the uh, cylinder. And the second high pressure stage here. Note the size of the cylinder is much smaller. And we're coming back to this photo here just to show the size difference in the compressors. So this is the first stage. You'll notice how large the compressor is here. It's blowing into the second stage. You note how much smaller the compressor is on the second stage. 
compound turbos are always done this way if, if they're done properly. And a couple more photos just to show this again. First stage turbo, big. Second stage turbo, small. And again, first stage turbo here, which is the big one, blows into the uh, smaller second stage one. With Raptor using two turbos of approximately the same size, we'll show what happens when you do that. Uh, it doesn't work very well at all. This is a turbocharger that Raptor is using for the uh, first stage. It's a Garrett GTX 2867R Gen 2. And here's a compressor map for this turbocharger. And we're assuming uh, sea level, 80 inches manifold pressure. I just plotted uh, roughly where the points would be here on this compressor map. At 300 horsepower, 350 and 400 horsepower. And it's actually a very nice match here at sea level. It would run right through the uh, high efficiency island here. So this is a nice match by itself at sea level. You remember that number from before, 7.19. With compound turbos, we take the square root of that to get the pressure ratio that each turbo compressor would have to output. So square root of 7.19 is uh, 2.68. So remember that number 2.68. We come back to our compressor map here and we'll say we're working at uh, 300 horsepower. The uh, corrected airflow through the compressor is about 30 pounds per minute here. And uh, 2.68 times 30 is about 80.4. So if we try to do that on this compressor map, you'll see it's not even on the map. 80 would be way over here somewhere. And uh, what this map is here is uh, pressure ratio versus airflow. These are efficiency islands here. And we want the highest possible efficiency, and that would probably be right about here, actually. But 72% uh, is pretty good. Uh, over here, you can see the compressor efficiency starts to drop off towards the right. And we definitely want to avoid anything that's below 60%. And you can see if we were over at uh, 80 pounds per minute over here somewhere, uh, compressor efficiency would be like 35 or 40 percent. You just can't do that. The lower the compressor efficiency, the higher the air temperature, and you don't want that. So we want it to be uh, somewhere in this range here if we can have it there, just like it is at sea level. And that's why using two compressors of approximately the same size uh, doesn't work. This compressor is way too small for the uh, first stage of compression. So what we need to be using for the first stage compressor is something like this uh, GTX 4202R. It's a much larger compressor. And we'll see our uh, 80 pounds at uh, 2.68 puts us uh, right in the middle of the efficiency island. This will be a good choice for the first stage compressor. So here we have a chart of the uh, GTX 2867R, which is uh, what Raptor is using for the number one compressor. And here's the uh, one that it should have here, or something around this size. So you can see the uh, compressor inlet is 50 millimeters in the case of the uh, 2867. And it's about 50% uh, larger here on the uh, 4202. And uh, the x the large part of the compressor, is uh, a lot larger as well. We're going to look at the turbine sizes as well here, because that's another problem with uh, Raptor's setup. You can see on the uh, turbo that's being used right now, the uh, outlet's only 47 millimeter, very small. The tip of the blades is uh, 54. And you can see how much larger the uh, turbine wheel is on the uh, 4202. The hole is uh, three inches, and the uh, tips of the blades are somewhat larger than that, but uh, much larger than down here. So here's a couple of different compressors. This compressor is slightly smaller than the one that Raptor is using right now. This one here is slightly larger than the 4202 that I showed you before. But roughly speaking, this is the size difference in compressors that's really needed on Raptor's compound uh, turbo setup. So you can see the graphic size difference between the compressors. This is the uh, small compressor from that other housing dropped into the large compressor here. And uh, compressor size, diameter, makes a big difference in flow rate. That's really what big turbo, small turbo means, although there's other aspects of the turbo to consider. So this is the compressor wheel. Basically the uh, height of the blades here and the diameter times the RPM it's turning at determines uh, how much air it flows. This is a turbine wheel on the hot side, on the exhaust side. This turns the compressor. Same sort of things apply as the compressor. 
the diameter and height of the turbine determines how much torque it can produce and with a large compressor you need a large turbine to spin it. Uh, it requires more input horsepower so a larger turbine. We can also speed up the gas flow and I'll show you that next on uh, turbine housing. This is a turbine housing and the exhaust from the engine flows in here and comes around this uh, volute here speeds up as the uh, area here gets smaller and smaller until we reach what we call a nozzle here and the turbine is in this hole here and as the exhaust comes around here it spins the turbine and uh, there's consideration here on uh, how small the area of this nozzle will be if it's very small we get very good response but very high restriction at high horsepower so it's a compromise on most turbochargers we don't want this uh, very small on an aircraft response isn't uh, important but we want uh, maximum efficiency so we want a larger wheel and a uh, larger nozzle area as well and Raptor uses a very small wheel and uh, I'm not sure what uh, the AR ratio the nozzle area here is on uh, the one he's using however the uh, turbine is inappropriately sized for the 300 to 400 horsepower this engine would be putting out you'd want a much larger turbine wheel and a much larger AR ratio or nozzle area here. So back to the turbine picture here for a second. This is the inducer diameter here. and This is the exducer. This is the uh, diameter of the hole you see in the outlet of the turbine housing. So here we are back at the reference data uh, comparing the two turbos. This is the one Raptor is using now. And uh, we're going to look at the uh, inducer and exducer diameters. So the uh, large part of the turbine blade is 54 millimeters and on the uh, larger 4202 it's 82, so much bigger. And also the uh, exducer size of small blade diameter is much larger in the case of the 4202 versus the 2867. And in my experience, a uh, turbine around this size is much more appropriate for this application. Airplanes fly at a very constant power setting, high horsepower, response isn't important so we use a very large turbine wheel normally and uh, this just isn't anywhere near large enough for a three to four hundred horsepower engine it's way too small this creates a lot of uh, restriction back pressure very unfavorable uh, pressure ratio across the turbine results in high exhaust gas temperatures a lot of charge dilution loss of horsepower and that's one of the reasons uh, Raptor is struggling to make uh, decent amounts of horsepower the uh, turbine is just way too small for this application. And the other thing that's important on turbines is the uh, AR ratio. And uh, we can see that here on the turbines. Uh, the larger the number, the larger the uh, area divided by the radius, and the slower the gas speed will be for any given mass flow. And we'll see the largest uh, AR ratio for the 2867 that the Raptor is using here is 0.86. He only has two choices with the uh, five bolt flange that he's using right now. This would be a better choice, but given the size of the turbine here, uh, still not a good choice. You'll see with the larger turbocharger, the AR ratios are quite a bit larger. And for a three liter engine, I would be using something in these sizes here. Uh, even the 0.86 is way too tight. My uh, 2.2 liter Subaru, which is uh, almost 50% smaller than this uh, three liter Audi engine, I use a 0.82, so you want to have something much larger than uh, 0.86 on a 3 liter engine. So not only is the uh, AR ratio too tight, the gas speed's too high, the turbine's also too small, and these two things combine to make uh, very high exhaust gas temperatures and very inefficient operation of the turbine. So here we have a turbine flow chart for the uh, turbine that Raptor's using here. Here's the different AR ratios here. So this is a tight nozzle, high gas speed. This is a loose nozzle, lower gas speed. You'll see with the uh, larger AR ratio, you can flow more exhaust. And with a small one, quite a bit less here. But in any case, uh, these numbers here are pretty small for an engine that operates, say, at three to 350 horsepower continuously. And uh, they're not really appropriate. It's another uh, illustration that the uh, turbine wheel and housings are too small for a three liter engine running it uh, continuously at this high horsepower. Here's a chart for the uh, larger 4202 turbine and this is uh, gas flow through the turbine 
and uh, pressure again. You can see the other smaller turbine was maxed out uh, around here and uh, these ones flow nearly double the amount with uh, similar efficiency. These are much more appropriate for an engine operating at constant high horsepower with constant high uh, gas flow. Uh, far more efficient to run the big turbine here, less restriction, more efficient overall. Uh, response isn't important on an airplane, it's sitting just at that constant power setting most of the time. I hope this uh, video answered a lot of the questions people might have had about Raptor's compound turbo system. Turbocharging is a very complex field and uh, probably not a good place for somebody to start out that's never done it before. The results will be predictable, there's a lot to know, and a lot of ways to fail. So spending a couple hours on Garrett's website and watching some videos, running some spreadsheets, certainly won't make you an expert on turbochargers overnight, especially when you don't understand some of the most fundamental concepts and physics involved in this. In the case of Raptor, higher this aircraft climbs, the worse the problems will become.